five nothing at halftime to the Bengals yesterday. Interim coach Steve Wilkes started the second half with Baker Mayfield benching P.J. Walker. Mayfield threw for 155 yards for two touchdowns and what was eventually a 41-21 loss to Cincinnati. Shannon, was what Baker did in yesterday's second half significant to you or insignificant? Well, it was insignificant. The Panthers was down 35 nothing at the half. There was nothing for Baker to lose. It also came the deep Bengals that started pulling some of their starters out of the game because they, the last thing you want to do is get somebody hurt when you've already had the game well in hand. And so we can't try to make the guy playing in mop-up duty like that's something special. Mm. The guy was going to lose his job because he had been playing very, very poorly. P.J. Walker was had the worst. You can't have a negative QBR. <laughs> but he was 3 of 10, 9 yards, 2 interception. He finished with a 0, 0.0. Because you can't do negative, he had the worst QBR that you could possibly have in the game. I don't know if anybody's ever had a 0, 0. Okay, he, he was given a 3 for the game. I, that's what my sheet says. Well, they should have gave 0. Know. Okay, fine. Uh Carolina hosts the Falcons on um, Thursday. Short week. Uh, probably go back to mm -hmm. Baker because he was the starter for the what first four or five mm -hmm. games of the season. Give him an opportunity. He knows. Uh, but no, nah, it was nothing. Skip is nothing. Let's not let's not make some more of this than what actually there. Carolina got three bad quarterbacks on their team, mm. and unfortunately, one of them has to play. Mm. So this was significant only because I laughed and laughed and laughed because I was thinking of my man Shannon Sharp up there in his palatial estate. What you laughing about? Up in Bel Air. I was laughing because actually Carolina has three quarterbacks and two of them are bad. But one of them, once again, proved yesterday what I've been saying about him all along. He can just flat out play. Skip, why, he why, is a playmaker. Can I ask you a question? He is a fire starter. Why can't he play like this when he starts the game? He, what game did we see Baker Mayfield in which he started? He had numbers comparable to what he had yesterday. The first game. In the fourth quarter, it's, it's, it's funny how significant was the – Final total yesterday, 155. That's what he had in the second half at Cincinnati. Where, by the way, he's thrown some parties in Cincinnati on the Bengals before when he was a Cleveland Brown. But 155 stuck in my psyche because that's what he threw for in the fourth quarter of the opening day game against the Browns Better down in Carolina. 155 yards. It took two bad calls down the stretch that gave Cleveland life, two terrible calls, missed calls, and all of a sudden the rookie kicker out of LSU kicked a 58-yard field goal to beat them. And then Baker played well enough to beat the Giants when they were getting hot up at the Giants in game number two, and it took no, a 56-yard well. field goal to beat him. 58 and 56, if you miss those two kicks, all of a sudden – I got a kick because uh, here we go. If they had started out 2-0, and Baker, has he's a front runner, I tell you, in a good way because he needed some front to run with, well, he and he got yet. none. And all of a sudden, bad went to worst, and Matt, not so much of a golden rule, finally got fired, and all of a sudden the decks got clear. I think Steve Wilkes he done got another play. coach fired. Yeah. I mean, how many coaches have Baker done got fired? Uh, how many clown shows he's been uh, stuck with? No, no. He got stuck with a clown show in Cleveland, and then he went down to an even bigger clown show down in Carolina, and he could not rise above Hugh it. Jack, Freddie K, yep. uh, Greg Williams, Antrim, got him, got him can. Okay, how did yeah. he get Hugh Jack fired? All, all he did was come in that year and win seven games for a team that Hugh Jack had coached to an 0-16 the year before. How is that Baker's fault? I don't know. To win seven games as a rookie? Skip. Really? Skip. I understand. But at some point in time, you gotta let you gotta let it go. Huh? I'm and not gonna let it go. Yeah. He can play. He can play what? I, I've said it from the, the start. No. He was in the band? No, he can play football they can't play at a high level. No, he can't. Well, how did he beat Pittsburgh with the QBR of 91 in a playoff game? Blake Bortles had a 93. Huh, can Blake yeah. Bortles play? Okay, but these were the clown show Browns who had not won a playoff game what since 1990. What about the Jags? You remember huh. what the Jags were? Yeah. What, what about him? Uh, this is about Baker Mayfield. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh. But see, I'm trying to explain that the court, the court QBR is not the end-all, be-all because Blake Bortles had a 93 against same Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, but he went on an 8-3 and three run down the stretch that year and was graded the fourth-best quarterback in football. He can just flat-out play, and he proved it again yesterday. And I'm assuming he'll put on a pretty good show with Steve Wilkes as the head coach well, on Thursday So night. why didn't he prove it when he got a chance this year? He did. He proved it in the first two games. They and lost. They lost. Yeah. What he prove? That he can lose? We yeah. already knew that. No. Well, he's he not he... breaking new. He's not breaking ground on that. We knew he was a loser.
They were ranked 32nd and dead last through the offseason, and that's and what they took are. over. And yeah. they still are. Okay, well, we'll see about that. All right, I'm not giving up. I'm you sorry. Told, you, we got 10 Ks on them making the playoffs. No, well, that, that's on the Broncos, and the, 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 they both have to make the playoffs for you to win, right? We better than I them. I mean, yeah. Broncos better than Are them. Are they going to make the playoffs? No, but no, the Broncos. Thank you. But the Broncos. Pushed. But the Broncos. But the, the Broncos better than Carolina. Next. Are the Broncos better than Carolina? Yeah. No. We got to go, mean? gentlemen. <laughs> you are out of time on this one yep. because we have a very special guest standing by. Up next, <laughs> Little Wayne is joining us to discuss his Packers and a whole lot more. Stick around. Undisputed is back. Win over Chicago. All right, so Shannon, away from Patrick Mahomes, now with Tua, is Tyreek making an all-time great statement? Well, Skip, I always start with a great player. And he, Skip, when you look at his speed, there have been very few players on the offensive side of the football that can impact the game, regardless of position, like Tyreek Hill can. We've never seen a guy, as fa maybe Bob Hayes, that with the ball under his arms is as fast as Tyreek. He changes the way defenses play he changed the, he changes the way not only that you play him that you scheme the offense that he's on you saw skip team refused to play single high safety against Tyreek when he was on the Chiefs mm -hmm. because they said we're gonna play the shell because he's gonna get over the top we saw him go for 200 yards in a quarter which is unheard of at Tampa against I, that defense I guess that yeah when they were they were pretty good too yeah skip I thought Tyreek would be Tyreek I just didn't I said now I believe he'll still be Tyreek because I saw him with Alex Smith. I don't believe he'll have the 60, 70 yard touchdowns. And we saw yesterday, Tua, they could have ended the game and not given Chicago another chance had Tua just put the ball out there and let uh, Waddle run up under it. But Skip, when you look at what, this, just what he can do, he's a threat that every time he touches the ball, he can hit his head on the goalpost. Mm -hmm. There have been very few receivers that we've ever said that about. There have been very few offensive players. Mm -hmm. I believe personally he's faster than Randy Moss. I don't think, and I've been around. I came in the league when they had Sam Raiders had Sam Grady and they had James Jett and they yep. had James Dad guys mm -hmm. that can fly. They did. Skip, mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this with my own eyes. Yep. I mean, two thousand receiving yards in a season. I don't care if it is seventeen games. Mm. Two thousand receiving yards. Skip, he and McDaniel, Mike McDaniel, has done a great job of scheming him up. He lines him up in the slot, lines him up on the right, lines him up in the left, puts him in motion. Skip, he, he, any DB that says they don't fear this man, they're lying. Because they know in the blink of an eye, he can run by you. And now you open up, he catches the ball, and he faces you up. Good luck trying to get him on the ground because he's cut his teeth as a returner. Mm -hmm. A punt returner, kick returner. And to be those guys, you got to be shifty. Yep. So now you got to tackle them in the open field. Absolutely, Skip. He gets 2,000 yards, Skip. You're going to have to start talking about this man getting a gold jacket. Well, I'd say. Hey, 2,000 yards. 2,000 yards for a receiver, Skip? Did anybody even think 2,000? I mean, when Cal Calvin got, what, 1960, I think, 1960, 1970-something, 1969. Like, Damn. But to go over, to be the first guy to go over 2,000 yards in a season, Skip, he's special. He's, he's unbelievable. Man got 1,100 yards, Skip. 1,100. Now, Patrick Mahomes is doing what he's doing. And I said, Patrick is going to be Patrick. It's going to look a lot different. Yep. He ain't going to have a whole lot of 50, 60 yard touchdowns, Skip. No. It's going to be Juju. It's going to be Kelsey. It's going to be MSV. It's going to be the backs. It's going to be this. It's going to look a lot different than he was before. It's not going to be longer a quick strike. Skip, remember they had the ball for like 12 minutes in the first quarter. You got Tyreek, you ain't never having the ball for no 12 minutes because he going to end it. <laughs> he going to end one of, these, one of these drives in about 30 seconds. Shannon Sharp, I think somebody should already be fitting him for that gold jacket. Oh, you think already? I have never in all my years seen anything like this man in helmet and shoulder pads with a football under his arm. His acceleration is second to none. Second to none. It is the most lethal acceleration I've ever seen. And you brought up Bob Hayes. I'm old enough and I was fortunate enough to watch every game that he played for my Dallas Cowboys, except for the first year when I couldn't get him on TV. But starting right away, he revolutionized football. Yeah, he made, he, he made you do away with the man band. Because prior to Bob Hayes, everybody played man coverage. 
and then he came onto the field and he just take off and, and they throw it and he run up on it. So they expect they went to the zone coverage. Okay. That's what Tyreek, Tyreek forced you to play him. You play a man if you want to. And yet in the early days of Bob Hayes, and by the way, he was an Olympic sprinter out 64 of gold medal. 64 gold medal. Tokyo. There were way too many white quarterbacks. I'm sorry, <laughs> white cornerbacks at that point because there just were. They were everywhere. I think it was a majority white cornerbacks, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that started to change pretty quickly yeah. because he changed it. Yes. They just couldn't cover. They, the, the, she just couldn't stop him. But this is a whole nother level because the cornerbacks today and the safeties today and the coverages today are so sophisticated and so supreme. And they can run too it's now. It's hard. They can all run. <laughs> they can all run, but they can't run they like they can run. Speed, yep. And when I saw him at Oklahoma State, what he did to my Sooners on a punt return, I just said, whew, man, he had some off-the-field issues, but I said, whew.